Before we wander on into the episode, I just want to make sure that everyone goes out there and hits up the YouTube, check out the Spotify, check out Apple, wherever you're listening or watching to this ep- uh, podcast, is to go down, like it, subscribe, hit the bell if it's YouTube, make sure you're getting those reminders. We do put these out every week, um, so make sure you do ch- do all that. It helps us out, and in the long run, we can make better things. So again, like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. We can wander our way over, you know, because this is wandering ways. What's Bigfoot possibility? Clink. Clink. Whoa, welcome back uh, to the Wanderers. And if you're... If you're like me, rubbing the boogers out of your eyes, we got a guest on today. Uh, Yeah, that ain't Mark. Mark's busy running a marathon or uh, rubbing some ankles or something. Um, (laughs) At least, you know, he loves his job. So that's good. He's he's busy. Um, But we got Jared Gray on again. Uh, If you don't remember him, he's my cousin. We go fishing. We go adventuring. We go journeying. Uh, he won't. He still won't share a bed with me. I've tried a lot. <laughs> every time, every time, I'm like, we'll get the There's one. There's two hotel beds. Room. Why would I need to? <laughs> we get the hotel room, and it's just like, oh, no, that one's for our bags, Jared. <laughs> for our bags. Just kidding. Yeah. How have you been? It's been a minute. Probably about a year since you've been on the podcast. Maybe right. I think last spring. Uh, yeah, either that or last summer sometime. So, yeah. I don't know, nine to 12 months. In the past. Right. It was, great, it was a great episode. You talk about almost falling out of a boat. Your dad's Oh, at Fort Peck? Yeah. Oh, scary, dude. So scary. I mean, that's fishing. That's the adventure. That's, that's the adventure. fishing. <laughs> we should have went in earlier that was the, the that was past fishing that decision wasn't because fishing that decision was because we're getting greedy with our time hoping to catch a big walleye but i caught that big pike yeah they frenzy storm coming storm was a brewing you're going to catch the honestly big it was right in the like shallow choppy waves and then yeah. they jumped out and it was uh, like ah oh, it's a fucking pike but it was so big that it was like curling up on that you know that yeah. net of my dad's that's what you, those are fun to out. catch i mean pike or slime you know slimy pike exactly that's why it was like it lost the hook in the net which was nice and then it's like well what do you want me to do and my dad was just like just flip it out i don't want that slimy fucker in my boat <laughs> that's what it was just flipped out all right see ya Didn't they are or anything it was huge though i gotta do i gotta do some research on that on what the the slime like oh. is because you know they all have it yeah, it's like a mucus or something yeah you gag you gag yeah i uh oh i was watching that show i don't know if you've seen it it's on netflix it's called outlast it's a new adventure show i saw yeah. it i haven't watched it though I'm, I'm in like one episode and it's interesting because it's like you guys team up together and uh go do your thing and like they, they they don't have food or anything and they're doing their thing and the guy like they start eating bugs and I just I gag just like you did. I was Ooh. like I can't. Sorry, or worms. Sorry. I, I know they're full of protein, but I'll die. Yeah. I mean <laughs> I'll, I'll choose death over eating a worm. I don't know, man. When you're starving, everything tastes good. You know That's what I mean? True. So That's like true. depending on like the severity, but I, I guarantee you'd eat some worms if you absolutely had to. Yeah, fair. No, it's one of those. Uh, it's one of those things. And I was watching that show. I was. It, I, what I don't like is I it, is it, it it hint at that the next episode that I was going to watch is like they start like stealing from one another and attacking one another. Oh, fuck. and it's like why would you do that? Like the other, <laughs> yes. you know what I mean? Like, like you're still civilized in like twenty. Lord of the flies on it, huh? Yeah, basically, because yeah. it's like you suck at surviving. You're going to just take from someone else. Yeah. Um. I, I'm not a fan of that, but I don't, I I gotta watch it more to see see what happens. Um, I'm about like those kind of shows. Could you think you could ever do one of those? Like go live in the wilderness for a month or two months? No, you're good. I'm good. Yeah, I don't, I, just, I, mean, I, I don't know. 
jack squad about like foraging or anything like that like oh, you'd figure it out on the fly like do i how many days do i think i could last fuck dude i don't know with what would you need i'd need a, like a fire starter even if it was yeah. like a magnesium rod i could do that yeah. um if it's wet out fuck i don't know man you gotta like you gotta dig a hole you gotta like, dig in the we're dirt. talking about summer is different winter up in these mountains fuck no dude like yeah. no, if you weren't it. warm enough like that'd be tough um always but start I mean, a fire you know yeah that's I'd yeah probably i probably mean. want like shelter like, could I do a lean to? Sure. I'd need like an axe, hatchet, you know, primitive tool. Uh, then. Would you need a compass or would you be fine with the, with the stars in this and the sun? Uh, I could probably give the sun a guess and same with the like moss, you know, on the tree. Oh yeah. Based on the shadows. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, it always goes it. on the north side. So like, and I know that's like a rule of thumb. It's not always like it's not a tr- like hard rule. You know what I mean? So but especially here tiny, in Montana, where you don't get a lot of moss on trees, you're going to get it in those yeah. in the on the shaded side, yeah. which is that north side because in the you know the sun's on that south facing. Yep, yep. And then like stars, I know the Big Dipper has something to do with the North Star, but. I think it's like right above the handle, right? Yeah, it's right off the like, yeah, right off the one of the tip. Yeah, the, I thought it was the bowl, the tip. Oh, right see, there. I don't know. Oh, right off the like, like, like when you look at like Alaska's flag, that's the Big Dipper, the North Star. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I would use that as help, but even then, like, you get turned around in places, and it, you know, you get a cloudy sky, or you get yeah. Like, are we talking about like? And it depends on the situation of like they're in Alaska and it's rainy up there is where this show takes place. It sounds like they're in that like kind of up by Juno and like that area somewhere because they said in the concentrated like most bare area and I think that's that area is around there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because it's very wet and boggy and rainy. Weird. Which what sucks because they're all about? trying to. We're, what are we talking about today? Yeah. You, you excited? Why you're why we brought you on? I'm we're just saying, about, we gotta get to it. I don't talk, know what we're we're talking about where you live. We're talking about adventuring the great Earth. Paradise Valley, the great oh. North Gate into Yellowstone, the granddaddy the, of all parks. Yeah, Ooh. the Lamar Valley, the Coke yeah. City. And no, we ain't talking about the blow. We're talking about the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, dude. What do we? T- what do you want to know about it? What do you want to talk well, about? Let's it? Let's talk. We got people. We got we got viewers who've never been to there before. So what? What? You're the expert. You've lived there for what? About a year now. Um, you're getting. You're getting. You're getting <laughs> You've yeah. lived there about a year now. <laughs> I mean, but we frequented it. We've been to that area. We fished <laughs> the Yellowstone River. We've done other things in that area. We've been to Yellowstone quite a bit. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Fuck! How many times have you gone into the park in this year? Yeah, I mean, not as much as some of the like hardcore photographers, but right. still, yeah, like times, 10 times, you know? twenty times. Yeah, I wouldn't say that much yet, but I'd easily, I'm gonna easily hit it by like summer, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah, no, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, I want to do the Bear Tooth Pass. I know Matt Buddy wants to come over and do the Bear Tooth Pass, which is kind of something cool we haven't been able to do it because of the closed roads in the park but now them being open this year we'll be able to do the billings to gardener kind of loop to your house i don't have to fucking drive i9 and get rock chips coming up from truckers and stuff <laughs> get rock chips <sighs> you get to drive by a beautiful bear tooth lake maybe see some mountain goats no i mean like that route was open last year no, because the they didn't have the the trail up to Mammoth was only remember they opened up at the end right after, right after, um, maybe a year before. No, because no, it was all last year. The flooding was last year. I know so in they, like late May. Right? Yeah, and the Beartooth Pass opened up. It opens up Memorial Day weekend. Oh right. 
And then, so it closed, so you could go up there, you could get into the park, but remember that slow Creek or whatever in the park was out. So you could only go as far as that all summer long from that way. And then you could, from the Gardner way, they were letting people go through mammoth, but you could, you couldn't get to the Lamar Valley. Remember? And then when I, that I, one, last year, my parents and I did the chief Joseph. The one like to Cody kind of. Like you don't go yeah. all the way to Cody, but it's like yeah, yeah. like Chief Joseph. By well, instead of Bear Tooth Pass to Cook City. Yeah, you follow the Clark's Fork essentially. I don't know. Of the Yellowstone, that's the you know the so that's the Clark's Fork where it goes by Bridger and stuff, and comes into at Laurel. That river, like it goes down by like I know what when you're talking Lodge. about, but the it's called the Clark's Fork of the Yellowstone. And that that's that same river it, that you follow on that Chief Joseph Highway, like where you, you basically follow the valley on the backside of that Beartooth Pass. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. yep. That's a yep. beautiful drive. It is, yeah. A lot of beautiful ranches in that area, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know that you know there's some moolah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, no, I like nice. that. Nice. I like that area a lot. Uh, I would like to fish it, but obviously you need the Wyoming fisher's license down there i think you'd want that um i fished the park before but you got to buy a special license when you're in the park oh gotcha and you know in reality it's like you're going to catch the same fucking fish on the yellowstone river and you just use your montana license like, yeah but i think that like it does have something to do with it like where you are fishing like you know, I mean, I I was honestly thinking about getting a different. I was thinking about getting that license this year, the um, Yellowstone one, like the full year. Yeah, and try it that way. You know, like first try to get like decent at fly fishing enough with the new rod to where you can kind of just like place it. Like I want to put yeah. it in that little like I'm fishing a creek. Yep, I want to yep, put it. Yep. Yeah, but that way I can go into Yellowstone competently with a fly rod and like do the fly fishing thing in yellowstone you know like oh and i don't know what the rules are of it though like, they have regulations at, at the at the ranger centers i have uh looked into it and you they do if you go to yellowstone park and look up like fishing and whatnot on their on the national park website yeah they have it listed as well like, it's like where you can go or like what you can walk to or because i like yeah I mean, and you see like someone standing in the, like lamar valley fishing yeah i'll pull it up right like, now you know yeah. do it to it well because that, that's definitely one thing in your area like it's one thing you can do i mean even in the winter in a sense i'm i'm sure catch a fish yellowstone national park fishing regulations in yellowstone national park uh there's a lot of i know like you throwing back one uh of like cutthroat trout um oh yeah, yeah like i wouldn't keep anything right you know? right here it says fishing regulations the yellowstone national park are structured strongly to support the native fish conservation goals cutthroat trout are the sole native trout of the park and were the dominant fish species here prior to the euro american settlement cutthroat trout arctic grayling mountain whitefish and other native fisheries are important to the ecology of yellowstone uh the abundance of native fish have been reduced to the impacts of introduced non-native fish including brook brown lake and rainbow trout these are non-native species continue to contribute to the decline of the park's native fish population um right here it says for your responsibility for all following all park regulations consult yellowstone park newspaper back country trip planner or rangers at visitor centers and back country officers to learn more stay on established trails in thermal areas for your safety uh, if you're fishing those areas, do not discard of fish carcasses or entrails along stream banks or lakeshore as they will track bears. Uh, do not feed any animals. <laughs> um, right here, the fishing season and hours. The season begins. Oh, so you can't go in the winter. Uh, Memorial Day and lasts through October 31st. Exceptions are noted in each of the regional regulations. So there's even regional regulations, which makes sense probably based on how the rivers flow out. Um, right. hours are so you can only fish in the daylight gotcha uh, fishing with artificial light is prohibited some areas are closed to human entry uh, because of like bear management areas and just other reasons 
Uh, you can get a three-day permit for $40, a seven-day permit for $55, or a season long for $75. And you can get those through recreation.gov even. Um, 15 or older, you need one. 15 or under, you need one with a, with an adult who has one um, or with an adult who is supervising you. Um, you have to have, you can't have felt sold foot gear in the park. Oh, you just uh, got to have rubber. I think so. It just says absorbent felt or other fibrous material are prohibited while fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they have tackle and hook regulations. Each angler must use uh, one rod and it must be attended to at all times. You can't snag intentionally because they used to do that down at fishing bridge, I believe. Uh, you need lead-free lures if you're using artificial lures and just lead-free everything. Uh, hooks must have points that are barbless yep, uh, yep. or the barbs must be pinched down by pliers. Um, that's good to know because I did not know that. Um, oh, yeah. Each fly may have up only one hook. Oh, because some people do fish with like two. Yeah, like Euro, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It says some uh, dropper, commonly referred to as dropper. Yeah. Dropper, hopper, dropper. Yeah. Which, yeah, your euro. Yeah. I think is what it, yeah. So that one isn't allowed. Um, except for feathers and other typical fly tying materials, the hook must be bare, nor organic or inorganic baits are allowed. Uh, organic baits include fish, fish parts. So, like alive stuff, bread, corn. Yeah. Inorganic baits include rubber worms, plastic. They don't want plastic. Right. Um, scent, none of those like scented stuff or chumming is legal. Um, non toxic split shot and jig heads you can use. So, like non lead stuff. Artificial lures are not allowed in, on the fire hole, Madison, or lower given or below given falls. These streams are fly fishing only. Oh, wow. So, if you're on that west side. And then they have possession limits. So all native fish must be released. Uh, and then there's no possession limit for non-native. So if you want, you can catch as much rainbow brook all <laughs> that as you want. I haven't, I don't know if I've caught a, yeah. Have I caught a brook trout? Up at like uh, Mystic or one of those lakes, if you fished like West Rosebud or something are good lakes for brook trout or even that wild bill i think has like brook trout those little tiny guys are brook trout you know what i mean some of them yeah i don't know we'll have to fish Beartooth lake this summer and uh like i said on a hot day you go on a hot day and it was every third freaking because no one is i've gone up there so many times in my life no one's ever fishing this lake mm. and I, I i went to my spot and i was like i know where these fish will be at this lake today found them it was just oh it was i got tired because i was drifting into the shore because you're not paddling you know you're just sitting there yeah. like, okay i got one on and they're just you know little seven inches six inches little dinks but when you're catching that many it's like oh yeah oh hell yeah that'd be fun to try to do on a that's how you practice fly fishing dude for the big ones right. you know just that over and over and like keeping them on you know Right. And that's what they were doing was, uh, yeah, that's the big part of fly fishing, right? Is, is, is keeping that tension and keeping that, uh, thing on, um, Tight lines, bro. Oh, right here. So, and this is something that we needed to pay attention to if we are going fishing there. So, uh, all rainbow trout, brook trout and identical, identical cutthroat and rainbow hybrids caught in the La Lamar river drainage, including portions of the slow and soda butte creeks must be killed. It is illegal to release them alive. That's that fishing up that slow creek. I really, if you want to do it sometime, I'm down to do that hike. It's like a five mile hike and you can get back there. And they say it's like some of the best fishing in the entire world. Like right there, <laughs> North Lamar, bring bear spray. That's what I got hiking <laughs> boots for, bro. Yeah. And bear spray. We need to be safe. Um, all lake good. trout at Yellowstone Lake must be killed. Yeah, I knew the lake trout one. Yeah. Legal to release them alive. That's nuts. I what what bothers me with lake trout and bull trout is I have a hard time identifying the two. And bull trout are the are native, like up, especially up at like Sealy and stuff. 
So you just uh, get that identity that uh, they give you an identification book sometimes where like those two are the ones that you like. I'm gonna look that up really quick. Yeah, do that. Um, all smallmouth bass caught in Yellowstone Park. And this one was one because we did I did catch that smallmouth here at Duck Creek, but I also caught I want to say it was a smallmouth with uh uh Mark uh with uh Marco and you when we went fishing last year. Um and you must kill smallmouth bass caught in Yellowstone Park and it is and report it. You have to report the smallmouth bass coming into the park. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Oh yeah, because they're like going further and further up the Yellowstone, huh? Yeah, that's the one I caught they're with Marco out. and you. Yeah. You did, huh? Yeah. yeah was. Did you you released it though? Yeah, but that's not in the park. Right, I know. But... I didn't realize I should have killed it. I would have killed it. Uh, let's see lake trout or it was one of those like white chubs actually i might have caught or you know one of those like white fish kind of things that's in the river right right yeah it might have been one of those yeah i mean bull trout have like pale yellow spots and then they don't have any markings on their fin yeah it's the fin markings that's how you tell them but yeah and the and the bull trout the the fin is a lot more like just chopped in the back okay. and like trout has a big like v it's like, more of like a, a yes yeah. yeah it's like a big putt in the tail okay. you know? it's like two okay. yeah. whatever yeah, but kill them lake trout sealy evens that way when you're up there they want you to kill the end the bat or no wasn't they wanted you to leave the bass in the lake we read at sealy like you could only keep one or i don't know that was yeah that was interesting but uh there is, though, however, in the park, there are trout tolerance areas. So, like, if you're fishing uh, Firehole River, Madison River, downstream of Gibbon Falls, you can only keep five brook trout. Uh, and it's catch and release, all rainbow and brown. Um, whitefish are important native species, so they must be released. Um, same kind of with the Lewis River and the Lewis Falls and the Shoshone Lakes and Lewis Lakes. Uh, you can only have five brook, brown, or lake trout. Uh, only one can be a brown. So there's different, there's different uh, things and there's different rules like based on. Well, your I mean, I was hoping that it would kind of clarify like, so you could just like walk down to the river. So there's regions too. So you, if you're fishing out of like where we would be going mainly because of where you're located in prey, uh, we'd probably be in that northeast region, is what they call it. Is that the um, Lamar Valley? Yes, that whole section is is the northeast region. Um, and they have even specific like t- rules to that. It's actually not a bad little work. Like, are there trails down to the river, or do you just yeah walk across fucking Lamar Valley? Like it just I get that like like where can you walk and where can you not? You know what I mean? Because like the fishing, you look right. at the river, there's not trails along the river, even though people do walk around there, but there's not like trails at the river. So you're just, you know what I mean? Like what's the etiquette, even if it's not like a written rule of where you can and cannot walk, like where's well in the Lamar Valley, you go over here where the river is really close to the road. And then you just walk in the river or along the river, or is it, right. you know what I mean? Like, um, You can download. It's a 28 page document. It is a, it, it has the regions broken down. Mm-hmm. And I believe in those regions, it'll tell you of like, like stay on trail. Cause certain parks have certain rules that way that are to, to begin with um, when it comes down to like hiking on trails to begin with. Like, so like Badlands National Park, for example, is an open hiking park where you can go wherever. Yes. They have established trails in the park. Mm-hmm. Um so here like i guess it'd be a good question for a, my yep. friendly park ranger huh? right but even in the sense of when you're looking at um the maps and stuff they even break it down by regions and like these regions have specific rules and regulations for them um okay. like certain lakes are permanently closed to fishing in the northeast region uh like the grant the, the grand canyon of the yellowstone and places like that 
Um, Makes sense. You know, certain things. Um, all the on native fish, rainbow trout. Yeah, they just so they have their broken down. Um, I would assume mostly the hiking trails, but a lot of the hiking trails do follow rivers and whatnot anyway. Uh huh. In this park, I would just say find those hiking trails that take you to lakes and rivers that you'd want to fish. Um, and then, yeah, when you go and buy your, um, when you go and buy, yeah, I would, I would ask your, and just get that information from them and say, Hey, yeah, I think even, uh, some of the guide shops up in near Livingston. Oh, they would. I think they sell, um, cause they, I think they do like either, uh, I don't know if they do guided. I think they sell the, the Yellowstone license. I don't know if they do guided trips into Yellowstone. I'm sure some do. I'm sure. I'm sure there's some of those services available. Um, I wouldn't, you know. Yeah, because a lot of them are like just walking, uh, and then there's like there's the only like gu- one guide boat service that can do the like float down the in Yellowstone, correct? And it's that wood boat. I am not sure. I the most of the the most of what I know. Uh, when it comes down to fishing in Yellowstone comes off the lake. Uh, and gotcha. I know there's a lot of like places, big places you can go off the lake, like fishing like that. But if you do again on the national park website, there is uh, if you go to the things, plan your visit, things to do guided tours, fishing, uh, they have guided fishing guided tours uh, and they list everybody. Uh, so like blue ribbon flies, blue or broken or outfitters, dead drift adventures, fishing buddy, LLC, greater Yellowstone outfitters. What all is enabled? I don't know. Like what you're saying, like, is, are they saying, yeah, you can fish in Yellowstone, but you're fishing in West Yellowstone. You're not necessarily in the park. You're, but you're still fishing right. the Madison river, but, or I don't know what, uh, what each one of like, who has what, can, they can do and whatnot i guess i don't know you know yeah i'm not an expert in that sense but maybe we can do it one day maybe blue ribbon can do it one day right <laughs> um no I, but i want to talk to you about i wanted today i wanted to ask you kind of you've been going into the park quite a bit recently getting there in the winter um yep. are there any are, talking to people talking to some of the people you run into have you heard anything about like the weather there not being as snowy as it should be or things not happening the way they should or the wolves moving ways based on what you're talking to when you pull over at some of those spots or what are i guess what are some of those conversations (laughs) the only the only conversations that i've had uh i've met um i met a gentleman who was down by the river kind of at the end of the Lamar Valley um kind of by that between the end of that Lamar and the Soda Butte right Uh, right there where that Lamar River gets close he's he was looking for otters he saw tracks and stuff like that um uh but he was there like all morning and then I came through about 11 30 and then I went all the way to Cook City um went in the gas station, got some stuff and then came back and <clears throat> excuse me. He, uh, he was still there when I was passing back through and I don't think he saw otters that day. So, I mean, it is just a, a game of, you know, waiting and just hoping, you know, but he saw like tons of, there was tons of tracks. Um, and it just wasn't in the cards, but, uh, I mean, we've seen them there. I mean, we've seen them on, you know, in spots and I know at that are- one time and that was the same area. Yeah, and they're just running. They're just running along. I yeah, think. on the ice. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I've been chasing that high since, and I haven't, haven't got it yet. But that's, I mean, that's some of the magical parts. I think like there's certain animals in the winter like that, like the otter, that you end up seeing a little bit better in the park. Um, I have seen otters with Mark in the in the springtime, in the early summertime, and they've been swimming. It's just like they're swimming over there. So it, it kind of looked like a muskrat or something at that point, you know, cause it's just like a head poking up on top yeah. of the water. Um, you gotta, I don't know, but again, right. You gotta just spend time like that guy. He's sitting there all day just to see an otter. Or, you know, you don't know, like some people are sitting there all day just to see a Fox and, or like that lady from uh, Florida, they see that Wolverine and it was just chance. Right. It's just right. like, cause I think it was on the road. Like it just crossed yeah. in front of them. It's like, Holy heck, how does that happen? Um, it's, and that's, I think the beauty of Yellowstone, um, 
because like every time I go and I'm sure you feel the same way is it's a new experience. Um, there's something different to do. There's so much more like I want to snowmobile Yellowstone park really bad, <laughs> like in the winter, just cause like, it's an experience I can do in that park. It's, you know, some of the places I want to see something I can do, you know, you're like, I want to go fishing in this park. Mm-hmm. Like it's, awesome i i don't know i like i like yellowstone a lot um i Thank hope you. this spring this summer we can do more in the park because of last year and how the flooding did affect it and did affect the travels uh, you know yeah it's a lot harder if you're you know when you're on that north side and you're blocked because all the rivers flooded out <laughs> exactly yeah if, if it would have flooded the south side we would have been fine last year we had been getting into the park just fine um this yep. year we're able to get in there and I, and you went with your parents last year, right? And they came, what all did you guys see when you went into the park? Um, right. As we pulled in from that, uh, Northeast gate. Yeah. Or the, right. Yeah, north, yeah. North yeah, entrance. Northeast. Yeah, Cook northeast. City's northeast. yeah. I yeah. think that's where we came through. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. And then we drove along the Lamar. Um, but we saw these bison like get scared by something and just like sprinting and then it ran across the road and like all of them, it was the whole herd. So it took a little while. It was actually pretty cool. And it was like raining. And then we saw like six bears. Wow. Yeah. That's when we saw like all of those bears. Um, it was spring, over right? By the two over like... by the petrified tree. Nice. That's a good then, spot. Yep, yep, yep. And then literally just down the road towards Mammoth. Uh, I don't know if that'd be up the road. Um, up the road a little bit. Saw uh, Mama Brown Bear. Well, not brown. It was black bear, but cinnamon colored, like cinnamon yeah. black bear. Yeah. yeah. Um, with her cub. Oh, nice. And then just a little bit farther up that road, uh, black bear actually black with their her like a little bit bigger cub than the other ones we saw yeah nice. and then, you know, like a bunch of elk around and she scared off the elk you know when her and her cub were kind of walking yeah that's cool that's fucking cool because they just yeah like we like me and mark when we came in that northeast entrance that time there was two grizzly bears well one we just saw the one he was eating berries and kind of i think kind of like the bison like you're saying like the one came out and just scared him away like like my turn to eat mother like like i'm gonna i'm gonna take this like yep and he runs away and you're like what the heck that was cool to see like it's it's cool to see that food chain of uh animals in in uh in nature in in the park and i think yellowstone you can really see that and were, did you guys just go to mammoth or did you drop down to old faithful or any of that or did you see the lake or go down to the the waterfall or any of that yeah 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 so um that road from tower yes. tower to canyon yeah village or whatever was closed okay no it wasn't i don't know i i remember going up to mammoth and then dropping down because we saw that um there's like that little sheep's cliff or whatever yeah. we went saw that um sheep eater that, cliff huh sheep eater cliff that's where yep. the the tribes in the park sheep eater the shoshone uh, lived there they yeah, and then the um the obsidian like yeah the obsidian cliff too yep 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 i yeah. remember seeing those and we went down to old faithful um and then i remember driving up and seeing like going to those boiling pots yeah and stuff is that the hayden valley right there uh on the like right like you go across the top of the lake and then up or you went yeah, we went across top of the lake, I think. I remember seeing the the uh, Grand Canyon or Yellowstone Falls, yeah, Upper and Lower yeah. Falls or whatever, driving that. So, yeah, you kind of went the bottom loop and then over the middle there, back to the junction or whatever. Yeah, I think so. Yep, yep, yep. Because yeah. it was kind of starting to snow when we were driving over that because I remember seeing Hayden Valley. I want to do that road between Canyon and Tower I have been wanting to do this road for like the past freaking six years, five years, however long it's been that because they've been doing construction on it because it kind of it goes along a cliff at one point and they have to like 
that bend. It opened this year? It opened last year, but because of the flooding, it was like blocked off because you couldn't get there because oh. the rivers. Like it was like, God dang it. So this year, I hope, I hope you and I are able to do that. In need of LED lights for your vehicle? Look no further than our friends at Oxteo. Keeping our vehicles well lit while on the road while looking for Bigfoot. Make sure to use code RUGARU, R-U-G-A-R-U, on your next set of LED lights. The Wild West is full of dangers, from snakes to bears. The outdoorsman must be prepared. That is why when you experience rivers like the San Juan or the Yellowstone, you must bring a blue ribbon net. Handcrafted and biodegradable, these classic wooden fishing nets are all you need while on the river. Make sure to use code RUGARU10 when checking out at Blue Ribbon Nets. Again, the code is RUGARU10. R-U-G-A-R-U-1-0. Hey, hey there, Reverend. Um, I heard that you might be running dry on your sticker supplier. Yeah, I've been looking around and I've kind of like run out of cool stickers to buy and put on water bottles and stuff. Well, I, I mean, have you seen the stuff Josh has been coming out with lately? No, I have not. Well, he is doing some really cool stuff with the Shop LS574. Yes, they're working with indigenous communities and making some really cool stickers. Um, he has a really cool Buffalo Mountain sticker. There's even water bottles, hats, sweatshirts, the whole swag. And we even got a discount code for you guys. Yes, if you use Wandering Ways at Shop LS574, you're going to be getting a discount on your next purchase. But not only that, you're going to be giving a percentage of that sale to the Little Shell Tribe, as well as they donate a dollar of every sale to murdered and missing Indigenous women. So just such a cool thing going on there. You know, you use the code Wandering Ways, W-A-N-D-E-R-I-N-G-W-A-Y-S, and you put that in there, boom, you're getting a discount. Um, I do do also want right now, because I did forget, I think last time you were on, but this time I'm not going to forget the Wandering Ways, Mark's favorite segment, the reoccurring segment, Cool Shit in Nature. And we have queued up for you today. Um, one of the desktops. What? You better be Let's good. Well, I don't want to share. I don't want to share with you everything on my on my computer. I don't want to. You don't need to see. No, I'm just kidding. There's nothing to hide. I just want to make sure I'm sharing the right video. You know what I mean? Yep. So we have here the first video, and and this is. I wanted to get your reaction here because <laughs> this freaking <laughs> goat man. I saw this that you sent me. I don't know. I just God, is that not? That has to be edited. There's right. no way. <laughs> so for those of you listening, it's a bighorn sheep with a nutsack. His nutsack is dragging on the ground. <laughs> like that's how big it is. It's that like, I don't know <laughs> if it, like, I don't know if it's edited, but the way his legs are walking looks and, real. I mean, like he's very skinny. So it might be like cancer, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like tumor. Cause like. That's just unnatural. There's, I don't know, the way it's playing just looks fake to me. Like it's, yeah, you right, right there. Yeah, I feel you. Like the, it looks lit, like in that light. But I, I, I wanted to get your reaction because I was just like, you know, you go to, you go to Cabela's, you look up at the big orange sheet, you got, the, <laughs> you got the nuts, and you're like, damn, those are big. Or like, I'd hate to get rammed by that, you know, or right there, like, oh, oh. like, yeah, I don't know. The next one is this one did you see this elk oh with the like um yeah what's on it a dead mountain lion on its head oh yep 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 the mountain lion. like that is insane dude like it's it and then for those not listen or watching or you know right here is an elk and his antlers he has a mountain lion just stuck in his antlers yeah like the pelt of one so like either the mountain lion died in a tree and it like got caught like the yeah. like decomposed like it's just a pelt basically so yeah, like, i wonder if he's rubbing himself 
on like a dead mountain lion somewhere, like a dead mountain lion carcass to smell like one so that they're not getting hunted by it. You know what I mean? Like I'm going to rub my. I don't think they're that smart. I don't think they have like survival instincts like that. I think it's more like either. I think what's trying yeah. to be like, like, I don't think he impaled. No, no. Cause you'd have, you'd have bones and stuff hanging at that point. Like he came across a dead one somewhere. Yeah. It has to have because like, I mean, I mean, yeah, if, if there was, if that mountain lion was alive, it's small. So it'd be in a juvenile and tried right. to mess with it and then impaled it. He'd be carrying that around until it decomposed. Like there's no way it would Unless, have to be like, uh, yeah, one, you know, died in a tree and then. Yeah. I, I don't know. I was trying to see if it's like a little more. bit. Yeah, I, I mean, to me personally, looking at it, like like they do say the elk do shed their antlers this time of year. Maybe he was, you know, rubbing, or, there's a pile of rocks and boulders or, or stuff. You know, he's trying to break it off. And I don't know, animals are interesting, but yeah, like he he obviously didn't kill the mountain lion. I saw like, I think I saw this on like TikTok and the quote was like, you know, when you're i don't know it implied that it impaled that and i was like there's no way that it could have like no been there for that long i mean no. juvenile one they do have uh, yeah no because uh, you'd have bones you'd have you'd have like that's that's a hide that's something that has been been eaten on by bear or something or you know it's it's decomposing yeah. it's at, it's at that phase or even like a hunter shot it yeah discarded of it just be, by the way it's dangling even just the pieces yeah uh, doesn't look uh natural even right like how who knows but it's staged <laughs> and at an elk ranch in colorado some guys staged it they went and shot it <laughs> it's staged Here. yeah <laughs> um no um the other thing though we we need to talk about today is living in prey living in the valley paradise valley ain't no duttons there um <laughs> like i'm curious how what's it like what's there to do what have you figured out what what are the tips and tricks <laughs> uh li- to living here is yes yeah. I, I don't know man i still haven't figured it out because i'm not that much of like a drinker <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like everything here oh go to chico and have drinks or go to you know the outpost Every bar, bar. Yeah. or yeah exactly the old saloon like yeah. it's all about drinking because that's all there is you know really right. um other than that it's just like i don't know i find myself you know on to and from like into livingston to go buy groceries well on the way back i'm just gonna take a different road or you know drive right. around go down and hit like you know, a recreation spot for a little bit, especially if it's a nice day, you know, right. sun's out, no wind. Sun's that's out. the big one <laughs> yeah. is if there's no wind, it's a nice day. <laughs> like uh, that day we went up that Jeep trail, we drove to the top of the mountain and it was yep. no wind. Oh my God. That was a perfect day. Yeah, dude. Like just, you know, driving back towards Mill Creek or, you know, driving up that immigrant Creek, like we did. Um, honestly just kind of getting out and explore and you know just find joy in the simple things again you know right we need to almost find some of those lakes in your area too to where it's like no we'll take this four mile hike back here and try out your fly rod on an alpine north yellowstone lake gosh catching an arctic grayling catching a fish (laughs) i know (laughs) arctic grayling would be great right yeah. you know what pisses me off the most and i'm gonna wander here a little bit but fishing i'm watching a bunch of ice fishing videos because i follow them on like instagram and stuff oh i can tell i've been getting a lot of ice fishing videos from you but like that's what i mean is you see the the the, the fish like how yeah <laughs> yeah what am i doing different yeah because like oh you put a worm on a hook and dangled it yeah same you know oh you're just jigging it like yeah it's moving like weirdly and that's when they hit it you're like 
Yeah, maybe that's what like we just suck, man. We just suck at ice fishing. We're 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 meant for rivers and streams. <laughs> no, it's been good. But another fun thing to do in the valley, which I like to do, is the hot springing. Well, yeah, I I like nice. you got Yellowstone and Chico and Chico. Um, I feel like which one has risen to your top? I guess probably Yellowstone. Right. Um, just because, like, I mean, Chico does have a nice view, right? Of like the mountain behind, it is just like a lot more commercialized, though. And it hasn't been like I want it to be hot. You know what right. I mean? And that's the thing is Chico's at like ninety nine degrees. You know, and you want that one hundred five, one hundred six, one hundred seven. Last time oh I went, gosh. yeah, to at, Yellowstone. Uh, Yellowstone? Yep. Damn. Yep. And, and you're like, it's more of a free flowing, like free form pool and stuff like that, which is nice. But the only thing is, I think their filtration system isn't the best. At that Yellowstone. Yellowstone? Yeah. Cause you see like a lot of the minerals in the water, which is fine. Cool. Right. But those minerals, a lot of times are growing on like real small hairs and stuff. So you just have, you kind of feel like you're just floating in body hair soup. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's one thing I think you might've liked about Lolo when I went up to Lolo Mm -hmm. was they did have a good flow. Like literally like it's small though. It was like low key. the, The hot tub was as big as like my guest room here. Yeah. And in the corner was like almost like a cement kind of mound. It was like a little nipple. And the the water was kind of just like that's where it was coming out of it feeding this. But over in the other corner, you know, diagonally across, it was like an exit. Oh, nice. So, so and, and being that. and it's not that big of a pool, so it's you know, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I do like the views at Yellowstone. I, we've had some really beautiful sunsets there. Yes, um, I do extremely beautiful ones. I do like that. I do like Bozeman. If you ever get a chance to go to Bozeman, you've been, have you been to Bozeman? Yeah, we went that one time. It was just a little spendy for like. For what it is. Yeah. Wasn't it like 17 bucks? Oh, I was, it was like 20. Yeah. And the, and in, for comparison, Chico's 10 and Yellowstone is 12. Oh, they, they went to 12 now. Yeah, they were, they've been, I mean, they opened up in the last couple of years. They've been playing around with that price because it was like $20, $10. Then it was like 15 I think it was. I think it was 15 for non-residents, 10 for residents. And I think what they did is they just averaged out the price and said, everyone can just pay $12. See, I thought it went 20 and 10 and then it went to 15 and then they brought, brought it down to 12. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. it's 12 now and we're happy right. about it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pay the 12. I like, I think that's yeah. fair. I want to say Norris is about that price to uh, Lolo was around there. I want to say. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I, I feel like the culture of hot springs is changing too. Uh, with Facebook, you see the Facebook groups and just the, even how people talk about it. And like I said, going to Lolo and it being small, going to that one in Ashland with Oregon in Oregon with Mark and it being small, you almost see the need for like those Fairmonts and those Chicos as they grow bigger and make yeah. them, um. And Bozeman, even the way they've expanded that outside. Yeah, that outside is cool, though. Like, it's very, like, n- freeform, you know, pools yeah. instead of just yeah, rectangles. Just like, everything that's rectangles. been, you know what I mean? But, like, yeah, yeah, that's what, like, Chico's cool because, like, I guess it's historic and stuff like that, you know, like the, but the rectangle pool and, like, just, it seems like more kids go there. I don't like families definitely uh, well and that they are because they're people like there is more to do at Chico right you have the like horse rides the tours the this the weddings people have there the cabins you can rent um staying at the hotel is like staying at grandma's house I swear to god it's an interesting little just like what the hell where am I Mm -hmm. um but it's it's beautiful it's they're all beautiful in their own way it's a little piece of Montana um Thanks for coming. Don't stay forever. Um, we we love uh, we love Just it. Stay for more. 
from Wandering Ways. Wandering Ways. You got the shirt on. You you can get that. At, I think Teespring. I think Mark hooked it up to have it on Teespring. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I got. I guess I got to be that guy now, because Mark Marcus Reverend is typically that guy. Marcus. But it's time for our final words. And Whoa. since you, Mister, are our guest, our guest of honor, our guest of patronage um our guests of high of high esteem um yet mr yellowstone himself living in living in good old prey um yeah take it away you can talk about whatever say whatever promote whatever heck matt promoted promoted yerba mate tea one time well you know what <laughs> i'm gonna for my promotion i'm yeah. gonna promote matt <laughs> <laughs> You know, reach out to him. Follow his Instagram. Ask if he's uh, doing watch okay. His videos. Hell, if you DM him on Instagram, he'll probably give you his phone number, and you can have a map buddy phone call because that is you. You got to experience it. I so. wish, and, and sorry to, to take time into your into your final words here, but I wish you were there at the night of the bachelor party because it was the first night. So Matt, Mark. Kaz, Tyler, Josh, and me were the first ones there. Mm. Colton, Yolo, and all them were showing up the morning the next day. Matt that night was like, hey guys, I'm going to take a phone call, right? He's on the phone for like an hour. An hour, right? He's walking around the house, the cabin, doing whatever. And then he goes downstairs for what I say is like half an hour. And then all of a sudden, in the middle of it all, he comes upstairs off the phone, red faced and sweaty and just like, hey, guys, what's going on? <laughs> and we're just like, what the heck, man? And then he's like, ah, well, I got to go finish up this call, but I just wanted to see what was going on. <laughs> yeah that's that buddy so yeah if you want to if you want to reach out to that he might give you a call <laughs> you want to reach out to that oh good um, yeah well go ahead i'll let you finish uh, man those were my final my final uh thoughts were to promote matt buddy so, so i love it you might have just it. canceled out that the, the promotion that i gave him you know and people are like i might reach out to and then tell that story maybe not anymore so <laughs> cliffhanger yeah Exactly. No, but he will entertain a good conversation. Um, for my final words this week, I want to thank you first and foremost, Jared, for being on. It was a pleasure to have you, uh, especially with Mark being out and busy. Um, Josh point- Gray made that hashtag. Yeah. Josh hashtag, add- keys. hashtag keys. Hashtag keys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to plug for that too. That's why I sat right here because I want. I like it. No, it, it looks yeah. cool, and it's it, it's the fishing rivers, you know, and your blue ribbon. You fish. You have nets. Uh, check them out. Check blue ribbon out. Uh, yeah. You know, buy a net. Um, de- also, check out Flextail. I got a little air pump here um, to pump air, so we can fill up uh, like a raft. Well, I don't know. This might take a little while to fill up a raft. <laughs> Good pressure, though. Oh, really? It, it also turns to a a camp light at night. Nice. So like uh, for an inflatable mattress or anything. Yeah. They're perfect for like, yeah, that's honestly, I think I saw like someone doing it. it took them like a minute to fill up an air mattress with one of these. Nice. Um, so maybe, I mean, really if, if you were work like if we we're doing that raft, that 10 person raft, you and I could plug that in. Like as one person's doing the bigger pump pumping, you yeah. know, it's like, Oh, yeah. I'll get this one going. Started. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Put some air it's air. Right. Yeah. But uh, other than that, guys, stay safe, be safe, wander well. Until next time. Bye-bye.